I'm Lewis Kaufman. Uh, I teach mathematics at the University of Illinois at Chicago. I'm a topologist and I'm interested in rope tricks. And this is take two on a set of rope tricks. I'm going to talk about how some of them were done. So to begin with, here, we're using this rope and we're making a knot in it, a, a simple truffle knot. <clears throat> you know, it's interesting to actually see what it is that's required in order to make the simplest knot. You make a loop and then you need to pass the rope through the loop in order to lock it up and it becomes topologically intractable, irreducible, knotted. So you can think of the truffle knot, if you like, as a loop with another line that continues back through the loop that locks it up. Of course, when you look at the truffle knot, you see that it could be regarded as the other loop and the line went through. Or if you add it as a simple closed curve like this, then you see three loops, each one of which is locking the other one. So um, there are many ways of viewing the same thing. But going back to the action of producing the knot, you tie the loop and then you drop the rope through and you think you've made a knot. But not necessarily, it depends on which way you drop the rope through. And if I remove my thumb, then you see what I mean. In this case, no knot was made. So I have to choose it in the right way. But that allows me, of course, to create a magic trick by dropping it through the wrong way and making what appears to be a knot, and in fact sometimes is a knot, or dropping it through, start again, dropping it through the right way and making something that will disappear. So that explains, of course, why that trick works, but it also shows you something about the nature of knotting, how the, knot, how the rope can somehow lock itself up in the course of the tying. And um, in more complicated practical knots, you see exactly this same thing. For example, I'll make a bowline knot. You make a bowline by making a loop and passing the rope through the loop. Now I have a truffle knot, but then you do a little more complicated thing. You bring the the line around and back down through the loop like that and tighten it here and you get a long loop here which is held tightly when force is applied over here in my right hand and so you could tie this around your waist and um, and use it to um, work with in your, when you're mountain climbing. Um, so all these principles are important in the whole subject of knotting. Now let's go on to the next trick. What was the next trick that we did? Um, I think, I don't remember the order in which we did them, but, but the one that's most relevant here is the one that made a stack of knots, the one I called the snake charming. Because what I did was I, I made what would make a truffle knot, one loop, and drop it through this way, makes a knot, as you see. Well, what if I made a stack of those loops? I could make another one, of the same type and put them one on top of the other, like this. And then if I drop the rope down through it and pulled it tight, pulled it this way so that one knot comes through the other, I make two knots. Um, and now you see the principle behind the snake charming trick where I make a stack of maybe five. I forgot how many I just did. Mm -hmm. Was that five? And drop the rope down through. And then the geometry of it pulls the last one all the way up, then the next one, then the next one, and finally the remaining ones. So we made five, <laughs> or as many as you like, depending on the length of the rope. By the way, you'll notice that I couldn't have made 100 knots on this rope. This rope won't carry uh, knotting uh, beyond a certain complexity. That's a fact of rope. Um, uh, the truffle knot itself requires a certain amount of rope length um, for a given diameter of rope. You could um, estimate that for yourself by taking a rope and tying a truffle knot in it and then laying out how much, uh, how much rope it took to make the truffle knot after you had pulled it up snug. And it turns out to be about 12 diameters, but um, it's not obvious what that number is, and no one knows a closed form expression for that number. That's an open problem in the theory of knots. Um, 
So rope length is a very interesting problem. Um, then there's the unknotting trick, where we made a loop, uh, we made a truffle knot, and then we made a square knot, like that. And then we dropped this through here, and then we brought it around and dropped it through there, and it became unknotted. Well, part of this is based on a theorem due to David Krebs, who was a graduate student a while back at the University of Illinois. And Krebs proved that this little tangle here, which is sometimes called the Hercules tangle, this four-stranded object, four strands, two going in from this side, two going in from that side, the square knot tangle, um, if this ever occurs in a knot, the knot will be knotted. That's Krebs's theorem. And there is a simple proof of this, but we don't have time to prove it now. Um, so that tells you that the first thing I made, when I drop this through, will still be knotted. Because it has, a, it has the Hercules tangle over here. And if I had done some more things over here, it would still be knotted. But, <clears throat> but the theorem loses its hypotheses when I drop the line through here. That doesn't mean this is definitely going to be unknotted, but the theorem doesn't guarantee that it's knotted. It has, a, it has a, an extra tangled Krebs tangle in there. It's no longer got the pure Krebs tangle, and it ends up being unknotted.